My name is Mark Shriver. I'm a professor of anthropology and genetics at Penn State University. And uh, my work's focused on um, human population genomics and uh, really with an application to um, mapping uh, normal variation. So for the most part, we map um, genes for pigmentation and, and uh, um, we do some disease work too, but now a major focus of the lab is uh, facial feature gene mapping. Well, really there's two kinds of molecular photo fitting. The first is indirect molecular photo fitting, and that's where you're using ancestry estimated alone, sex and ancestry estimated from the DNA sample. And then that allows you to make a, a number of predictions. But um, direct molecular photo fitting is finding the functional genes that are affecting that trait and um, uh, using those in your model. So predicting both with the ancestry as a component, but also with the genes that are functionally affecting the trait of interest. I think there are definite uses for the molecular photo fitting markers that we have currently, and um, I'd, I'd like to see them used, you know, especially high profile cases. Um, as far as it becoming mainstream, um, you know, this, this may take some time um, largely because uh, there may be a lot of cases where it's unnecessary if you have a suspect and evidentiary material and they match, just go with that. But if you have, you know, um, a serial rapist and there's um, no match to, to CODIS and no suspects, you know, you might as well automatically start looking for other leads. And the earlier you start doing that, the more likely you are to bring that person to justice uh, you know, before he hurts more people. One big um, issue that comes up in, you know, looking at the kind of work we do is um, the question of race and the question of population difference and how do we, how do we understand that. And um, the, the genes that we're focusing on and the traits that we're looking at are really some of those that are most different between populations. I mean, I've published a lot of papers on skin color gene mapping, a trait that's very different. We're now studying hair texture the face itself is very different. And um, in fact, these genes are probably different because they're on the surface of the person. They're on the surface, they're interacting with the environment, uh, the intense sun here in Phoenix is one thing that's very noticeable, um, but uh, you know, as an example, but also other people. You know, we're visible to other people on our surfaces and, and that interaction um, uh, we call evolutionarily sexual selection. So another kind of evolutionary force that really has been understudied in people, it's very important. Um, but also, it, it, I mean, I guess the critical piece is that people need to realize that, you know, we're very much the same underneath. And it's the surface where genes have evolved at an accelerated rate. So those genes that determine features on our surfaces are more different than the average gene.